welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Queer Prophets Podcast. I wish that got easier to say, but it just doesn't. Um, <laughs> just a reminder, we are about three things here at Queer, Queer Prophets, inclusion, community, and growth. Those are the three pillars that we have, uh, have really founded this podcast and really everything that I try to do related to Queer Prophets on. Um, just as a reminder, I guess I should say this, I'm Diane Conklin, your host of Queer Prophets Podcast. And today I am thrilled to be talking to um, our guest, Amanda Mary. And Amanda, we are um, just going to let you, we're just going to jump right in here and let you tell them who you are and what you do. And then we'll jump into some Q&A. Great. Thank you so much for the introduction. I'm super excited to be here. Um, just as a forefront, I am so a member of the uh, queer community. I'm a lesbian. I'm also a member of this disabled community. So I have kind of both feet in that. So both are very important aspects of, I think, my life and especially being inclusive to other folks and making sure that they, between accessibility and inclusion. Um, I am an astrologer. I have over a decade's worth of experience. Um, so people are probably wondering, why is an astrologer on here? This kind of, this kind of funky, you know, what's your sign here? Um, well, I kind of view astrology as like cracking the code of your personality. I really got into it when I was actually in a really bad accident and I had um, broken my back. Um, so I was laid up for a while. I was, you know, Googling all these little horoscope things, you know, like, oh, I'm a Gemini. Like, I'm like, this doesn't really sound like me. People get paid for this, right? Like, you know, how are they getting paid for writing this? And I'm like, oh, there's so much more. So I got into looking at what a birth chart is. I'm like, oh my God, how does this, how does this know who I am? This is like, so me. And the more I got into it, I'm like, well, okay, here's how I can kind of use this to benefit other people. I can kind of tell them who they are. What's like the most wonderful part about them? How can I make them succeed? And I, my main, you know, base is predominantly female. And, you know, there are members of the LGBTQ plus community that I do see, and I kind of try to help them understand themselves better and maybe help them almost kind of come out into their own way. So that's, you know, definitely important to me. And looking at astrology, it's almost looking at a person through a no bias system. It's looking at their personal chart without the judgment. It's like, this is who you are. You might not be telling me all these wonderful things about you or all the struggles you've been through, but I can see them. And then in turn, I can tell people, you know, all right, here's what transits. I think that this is a pop culture one, so I'll mention it, but Mercury retrograde and like screwing up technology or something like that. So it's like, I could tell you where that's affecting you, but how to use it, you know, for Mercury retrograde, it's like going within, especially now, it's like going within to change what you feel like has been stagnant. So I'm able to kind of pinpoint the areas of benefit and struggle. It's almost like astrology is like a weather forecast. You know, it's like, I can tell you it's gonna be raining tomorrow. And well, for both of us, it's raining now, mm -hmm. I'm sure for most of you, but I can tell you, you know, what's energetically happening, what you do with it's your own free will. But I think that this is very empowering to almost lean into the energies around us and be like, okay, you know, something bad might happen, but it might not. Here's how I can avoid it or lean into it or use it to my advantage. So it's all about flipping the script of feeling kind of powerless to the world around us and leaning into, okay, you know, it might be a bad day, but it'll get better tomorrow. So that's, you know, what is powerful for me and, you know, understanding myself and being able to have better relationships with people. You know, I do things called the synergy chart where it's, I take two individuals you know, couples, birthdays, or even friends, right? It's like, you know, sometimes you have a partner that's frustrating and you're like, oh, you know, why is she washing the dishes when I want her to cuddle with me? It's like sort of tapping into her love language versus yours and how you can interact and make it a more positive experience for both of you. That's great. You know, I love the idea, you use the same words that I use related to business, right? Leaning in. Um, and I think that's an important concept for us, especially right now, right? Is this idea of leaning in, we, you know, we have this tendency to, to, you know, kill it and crush it, and ram through things and, you know, do whatever it takes and, and hustle. And there's nothing wrong with any of that, right? I mean, there's a time and place for that. But I think, you know, where we are right now, as far as just, you know, having been through so much of this with COVID and everything, it's like, you know, maybe instead of trying to 
to break through things. Maybe we should just be leaning into things and seeing where they go and having a little more feel um, for that. So I, I love that idea of leaning in as opposed to, you know, ramming through things and, and, and just, you know, rushing through life all the time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm just going to say that's a very airy, a very airy and qual the ramming through things combatively moving forward. And, you know, I think too, there is a lot to be said with that as far as like the US and its political system, its structures, not to get too deep into politics, but there's the astrological relationship between really what's happening now, what's happening in our community, what's happening as far as acceptance and what's going on in astrology. So I think, you know, another sort of common Facebook thing here, even though we had the song, The Age in Aquarius, when technicality, most astrologers don't believe it truly started. We were previously in Pisces and now we're in Aquarius or, and it shifted probably on December 20th, 2020. So that was what's called like the great mutation. So what that means is all the signs, all the planets are now in air. Aquarius actually is in astrology and the system has evolved. Some of the language is still, it's, it's ancient. So some of it's going to sound, and I try to make it more inclusive and more less gendered sounding too, because there's that portion. But basically Aquarius is the underdog planet. It's the person that doesn't quite fit in or it stands out. And we tend to ostracize or alienate them. Oftentimes like the you know, LGBTQ community, there's this disconnect between us and people that you know, don't understand us. So shifting from the energy of like stagnancy earth, like we're all about money and finances. We, Aquarius is humanitarian and it's almost like the indicator of being queer. It's like, you don't quite fit in, but you are so ahead of your time in a lot of ways. So we're sort of shifting energetically into that as far as the community sense. So people are starting to actually view us. I want to, I dare I say as humans, like as equals, like we're kind of coming into this. We all are one person, one entity, you know, one humanity, no one's just sticking out. So we're kind of migrating and integrating that. So astrology is almost telling us there's really hope for us and being understood and everybody has something unique about them or it might be different. So I think people can start to empathize with our community and understand that we are humans too, you know, and we need to actually be treated as such, you know, not, we're not aliens, you know, we're not like <laughs> coming from a play. I mean, Hey, who knows? Maybe we're aliens on this planet now, but that's another show. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Cause one of my really good friends and I often say to each other, you know, we are aliens. We just talk about how, you know, different we are and, and how we think differently. And so it's funny that, that you mentioned that. So, I want to look, I want to sort of loop back because one of the things that you said a few minutes ago was this whole idea of, you know, that using astrology almost gives us this ability to be non-biased and non-judgmental. So can you, can you expand on that just a little bit? Cause I found that intriguing when you said it. Yeah, no, absolutely. So when I do readings, I basically put all of your information into my computer system. I pull up this chart with a bunch of crazy lines and it looks like you're like, what the heck? is this, you know, Google an astrology chart after this, you're going to see what I mean about crazy lines and everything else like that. But basically I'm looking at this chart. I'm able to see your traumas, how you overcame them, your strengths, what do you like to do for fun? I can see so much about the person, but I'm not even really, it's like, you could just sit there and I could read your chart to you without any judgment because I don't know you, but I know you. So it's almost like I got the code. It's like, this is all the wonderful things. It's like, I'm not going by anything you say to me. I'm not going by anything you're doing. Like you're, you know, maybe body language plays a role in how we read, but it's not, the chart is just there. It's like definitively you. It's like, wow, like you've overcame all these struggles. It's like if I met you on the street, it's like, maybe I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to talk to that person, but it's like, I'm looking at your chart and I'm like, you're great. Like you're fantastic. Like, look at all you can do. Like, look how wonderfully emotive you are, or look how strong you are, or look, hmm. you know, I can see like the traumatic stuff. It's like, look what you overcame to get where you are. So it does, it gives us me at least. And I think the world, it's like seeing us from a step back point of view, but also in the most intimate sense. 
you know, that's, I find it interesting because we talk about, you know, marginalized communities and certainly the LGBT community is, you know, as well as, as certainly as well as disabled and so many other things. And so, you know, to think that you've got this tool, if you will, you know, where you can take a marginalized community and put them on sort of an even level and an even keel with, you know, with everyone sort of thing is, is, a, is a, is, would be a unique place to be in the world, certainly a, 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 on an everyday basis. Oh, definitely. And I kind of say to my friends and the ones that I've done their chart or I've converted over to my side of um, getting your chart read or getting your chart done or me letting have your birth information um, is that I wish everybody walked around with a birth chart so I could treat you in the best possible way that nurtures you. And it is very important for our community to be understood as like individual humans as well as a collective because it does, I know when people relate like pride and that the antics that go on there, it's like, that's all your community is about. And people kind of throw that in our face. I think oftentimes it's like, you're a bunch of party animals. Hey, hey maybe we like to party, maybe we're more fun. How about that? But basically, you know, astrology for me is a way of seeing, even trying to relate to people that might not understand me, you know, in our community or you know, I've talked to people and done charts. They have no idea I'm, I'm a lesbian. You know, if you can see me, I, I don't technically look a certain way that you would immediately identify me. Like, you know, if we're truly thinking about it in those terms, which is silly, but, you know, I've ended up talking to people that I don't think they shared my point of view. They didn't share my politics. They didn't share, you know, anything about that. But, you know, part of the session is I eventually told them that I was gay and it was almost like them interacting and them kind of knowing about my chart a little bit and their own. They didn't really know what to say because there wasn't any sort of judgment left. It's like, well, I got to know you and you got to know me on such a deep level. Like, I don't really have as much judgment left anymore. So if we were able to really use that to understand one another. Yeah, isn't it interesting how we take one little thing and make it everything, right? So like the example that you just gave about, you know, somebody seeing a, a pride celebration. Okay, that's a couple of days, right, out of the year. Do you do that same thing with a St. Patrick's Day parade where somebody gets out of hand or a Christmas parade or does that define, you know, okay, you're a rocket at the Thanksgiving Day parade. Is that all of who you are? You know, does that define your entire life of, you know, it's always amazing to me when people take one little snippet that that fits for them or doesn't fit for them and, and we blow it up. Right. right. Um, I've often said the same thing about when, when you come out. Right. People, when you come out. So for me, you know, like you. Right. If I said to somebody, I'm a lesbian, what they automatically see is two women in bed. Yeah. You know? Now, if a straight person comes to you and says, hey, you know. Uh, Amanda, John and I are getting married. Nobody sees that. What do they see? They see, you know, this couple having children growing old together. And, you know, that whole thing, it's a totally different story just by the use of, you know, different words. And so it's interesting that you talked about that piece because so many times we do take one little snippet of something and we say, oh, well, that's who they are. Or that's what they're about. Or that's what they stand for. Um, and it, it, it's ludicrous, but we do it. That's true. And, you know, I mean, we're all, I think we're all guilty of it too. It's like, we're, we're humans. We judge. I mean, what is it? 10 seconds into an interview, somebody knows if they're going to be hired or not. So that's part of obviously our survival mechanism. Like, you know, back when we're being chased by cyber saber tooth tigers or something, there's that like lizard brain reaction. And that's part of the judgment piece. But part of being human is really taking a step back from yeah you know, that one initial thought. And it's true. People visualize the gay community. And a lot of it is like the way we're seen in the media. I mean, even when we watch TV shows, it's like, I don't think most like the L word. I'm sorry. It's like, that's a fun show. Don't get me wrong. But it's like, I don't think most of us act like that. We're not like crazy, <laughs> like with 20 partners. Right. Well, and you know what I often say is that can't be real because none of them have a dog. That's that's true. <laughs> An organically sourced rescue dog with one leg, depending. Right, exactly. See, it's like that can't be real. That's funny. So let me shift gears for just a second, Amanda. I want to talk a little bit about since you brought it, the, the disability thing up, you know, and we're talking about being judged and, and, you know, that sort of thing. 
do you find and, and I'm just going to be direct and ask the question and, and, and see what, where it goes. But, you know, do you find that you're more accepted in the queer community or do you think it's, it's even harder being queer and disabled? That's a really, that's actually an interesting question. I think it's a little bit harder. I found, um, you know, I'm going to say in preface that dating, of course, is really a matter of exclusion of who you want to date. Like you're not going to date everybody. So you're going to have certain parameters. But I found that because we are such a small community, you add, say, one extra element to your personality or your ability, and it does, it makes it more difficult. Um, I think that I've, you know, because before I came out, I did date men and I had similar disabilities or similar issues, and it wasn't as much of an issue. Um, people, you know, kind of will sometimes rudely approach me and I have in the gay community be like, oh, what's wrong with you? Because I walk with a mobility aid. So it's like an apparent, uh, you know, not sitting here talking to you, you have no idea, but, you know, walking around, you'd be able to see it. You know, people asking kind of rude questions or I think it's hard to kind of merge the two sometimes. I found it a little difficult and, you know, some people really just directly saying, I don't, frankly, I don't have any interest in dating a disabled person. So I've had more backlash, surprisingly, in that community and also accessibility to like pride events. So this is kind of, I know you, we were talking before the show about like what can be changed, accessibility to pride events. There isn't any, you know, if you have a wheelchair, if you have a, you know, have any sort of ability, you know, that is challenged, you're not going to be able to make these, you know, you're going to have to wait in line for the bathroom, you're going to, you know, things that really take this to a level where you're kind of being excluded with own in your own community. I get it's a party, but it's also really a celebration of our community. And I think that access like wheelchair ramps, things like that, even if they're pop up ramps are they should be included. It's very difficult getting around and navigating, especially pride events. Hmm. You know, it's, it's interesting you know, on, on a couple levels. One is, I think, I think because we think many times of the community as this young, hip, you know, fit, you know, especially, you know, kind of population, we probably don't think as much about some of those other things. And I think that, you know, back in, back in the 80s, right, when a lot of, when, when the AIDS crisis was happening, we were probably and again, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud here, but my guess is we were a little bit more aware because there were, you know, more men that were having issues getting around and still attending events. And, and maybe because that's gone away um, a little bit, certainly HIV hasn't, but, um, you know, we certainly are, thank goodness, we're not losing people as uh, nearly as rapidly, you know, as we were, but, you know, maybe that's part of it. Maybe, you know, because that's gone away, it's, it's not thought about. Um, as much, but certainly, you know, if, if we want to be inclusive and, and that's certainly one of the things that, 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 you know, that I'm about and certainly that I want to want to talk about and, and make a difference in, if we want to be inclusive, inclusion, inclusion has a bigger definition than just the LGBT community, than just the color of your skin, than just, you know, male or female, you know, gender identity, all of those different things. And certainly disability is something that we as a community certainly need to be, I think, aware of and based on your experience, certainly more aware of. No, I definitely agree. And that's a good, interesting point about the, the AIDS epidemic is that, yeah, I think people, it, because it's managed, basically, it can't be cured because it's managed and people are more aware of how it spreads, you know, the fear and also kind of, you know, we had almost the, the, I think the support at a certain point, not certainly at first of the straight community saying, well, straight people get HIV too. So, you know, that almost not normalized it, but did it integrated it. Mm -hmm. So I think the information piece, so, you know, getting the information out to people in the LGBT plus community that, you know, there are folks that are disabled that want to participate in some of the things that you are doing, you know, whether it's rallies or, you know, it's pride parade and, you know, maybe a little tiny thing. That's the thing. It's like, these can just be little tiny steps, like a pop-up ramp, or it's like make people feel welcome because we know how it feels to not be welcome in spaces. So is it something I resent the community for? Absolutely not. But I think it's a very important you know, standpoint is that we need to be aware of that. We have biases too. That's the thing. We're humans too. You know, they're good and bad humans. They're 50 shades of gray humans, you know, <laughs> it's, 
you know, we have our shortcomings. Yeah. Well, and I think in a lot of ways, and I'm talking about this with, with some other guests is, you know, we have a tendency inside the community, as much as we talk about, we want to, we want inclusion and we want to be accepted and all that. We have a tendency to be quirky. We have a tendency to be, you know, uh, you know, to, for us that we hang out with people like us, not just in the gay community, but certainly everywhere, right? I mean, pick the religion, you know, those people hang out together, pe pe people of color, people of a different, um, you know, ethnicity. We have a tendency to go and, and hang in groups where we, people who are like us, people who look like us, people who think like us, people who, it doesn't make for a lot of uh, e exciting or interesting or uh, conversations, right? If you want to have a conversation and, and not an argument, but uh, but we tend we flock toward that, and I think I think that has probably some to do with it. Um, you know, and it's it's interesting that we're we're talking about the disability with the dating thing because um, you know I've seen several posts lately on Facebook, not in dating sites, but certainly on on lesbian sites, where people have talked about things like you know a woman's weight or uh, you know, a, a interracial relationship or whatever. And it's, it's always interesting to me, these, these judgments that people make one way or the other, right? Not necessarily good or bad, not necessarily pro or against one, but it's very interesting to me, uh, the conversations that come up when, again, we want to talk about being inclusive. We want to talk about increasing diversity. And yet, do we live that in our own community? That's a good point. And it's the thing too about these, I know the groups you're talking about too, I'm members of them as well. And I'm always a lurker. I like reading the comments of the things. I rarely comment, but I'm definitely a lurker. But it's very interesting how many things you can say, and not to say you can't have your dating preference, but how many things you can say about a person are a deal breaker to you or you know, not acceptable or not attractive to you. When in reality, you're disassembling a whole human being here, right? You know, you could say all these things and the next minute somebody walks in the room and you're like, wow, that's like the person I want to be with. And they probably have half of the things that you said you wouldn't want to date because it's like, you just don't know them. You know, it's one thing to say, you know, visceral attraction, like that's like, you know, if we really kind of logicize, oh, we can break it down. It's like, oh, I like nice teeth. I like nice hair. I don't want someone overweight. I want someone short, you know, all those things. And it's interesting. I think too, just to cycle back quickly to the astrology piece, that's the thing. It's like, I can see who you are as a person and it doesn't have anything to do with your physical being. So mm -hmm. in, in turn, it's like the kind of the ultimate dating cheat tool. For me. I, I used I'm well I'm engaged so it worked out so I you know kind of like, hey, what's your birth date and like stuff like that before going on a, a date honestly and it's just you're able to kind of see where this person's strengths and weaknesses or how they're compatible to you that's almost a better way it's like the emotional compatibility versus the initial attraction you know our looks fade our appearances change sure true. So. Yeah. so let me ask you this question because this is this is interesting um to me so i'm trying to figure out how to how to word this so that it comes out right right so i've always said for me you know it's not about look it, it, society is set up so that you know whether it's an app or whatever what's the first thing you're going to judge the appearance i mean let's just be real right let's just call it like it is right because you're flipping on an app and you're gonna you know not attracted not, you know whatever to this to that not an, right and then you stop on the one that you find something attractive about. And as much as I always say, and I've, I've said this for a long time, to me, it's not about the external, it's about the heart, right? It's about what's inside. It's about the person. It's about who they are. Are they honest? Are they, those are the things. And yet initially we do the, the, the physical part, right? Um, and, and probably miss out on just by the way society is set up and the way dating apps and those kinds of things that we we do now are set up. We probably miss out on some things. So, so I guess it, the question I want to ask is how how accurate is two people's charts being compatible as opposed to two people who sit down and just get to know each other who maybe if you looked at their signs or looked at their birth dates or whatever, you would say these signs aren't compatible and yet they are. So how does, how does that happen? Well, that's a great question. So I think when we're talking, we all kind of know it's like, Hey, what's your sign? We're talking about our sun sign. So most of us know what that is. 
I say most because I have met people when you're born in a certain day, the sign switches over halfway through the day and they're like, I'm a Scorpio. I'm like, actually, you're Sagittarius. They're like, oh, that makes more sense. But there's many multitudes of components. There's your sun sign, your moon sign, your ascent. There's all these. It's look at Google it online real quick when you get a chance. It's a lot of information. So it is accurate. I find it very accurate in that it's kind of able to tell people, say, one of you has a temper, right? And the way you express your temper, so that'd be your Mars sign and whatever aspects to it. So say one of you has a Mars and Cancer, which can be kind of passive aggressive when it's angry and it plays out in their career, right? Like, so say their mid heaven is their career. That's where it plays out. So if they get triggered, they're going to be very passive aggressive, right? So say that person partners with somebody that has a Mars and Aries and it's in their first house, which is how you appear to other people. So it's like your partner's being super passive aggressive to you. And you're like, can't you just tell me what's wrong? And you're pushing because you're Mars and Aries and you're just aggressive, you're fiery. So it's almost like, okay, we have the compatibility elements here. Everyone's compatible to varying degrees for their purposes. Like some are friends, some are romantic partnerships, some really are soulmates. There are different levels of relationships, but it's able to tell us it's like, okay, I'm the Mars and Aries person. Maybe I should take a step back when I don't push her so hard all the time to tell me why she's angry. And maybe the Mars and Cancer person is like, okay, maybe I should actually speak when I'm angry and not you know, directly and not be so passive aggressive about things, you know, taking and dialing it back. So it's almost like it's a moderator, I think, of relationships. It's more than just the sun sign. And I would never say if two people came to me and said, I'm my compatibles, I'm not going to say you're not. I'm just going to say, how can we work together to have a better relationship? Because some people are like, I don't understand this person now. It's like, we had that physical attraction, you know, we have the emotional attraction, but it's like something we're just like two ships passing the night, like we're not getting it. So astrology can kind of help shed light. It's like, oh, well, that's why she's doing that. And maybe this is why I want to react in a different, more positive way. So, you, so what I hear you saying is, yeah, you could, you could theoretically say, yeah, you two are probably a match or you're not a match or whatever, but you could also use it then to say, you know, hey, we're having this issue or whatever. And then you could look at it and say, well, of course you're having this issue because you do this and you do that. And so it, it might in fact help people come to some semblance of togetherness that could potentially help the relationship if there were issues or challenges or things that, you know, that, that they felt weren't working. No, absolutely. That's one of the, my favorite uses for it because I do people come to me. It's like, oh, am I compatible with this person? It's like in certain areas, yes. In certain areas, no, but that's too. It's like, then the free will kicks. And I always say, I'm all about the free will, right? I could tell you, you know what? Jupiter is really positive for you today. You should go buy a lottery ticket. You'll probably win something. I don't know the amount, but if you never buy the lottery ticket, then you're never going to win the lottery. So that actually <laughs> comes into it. It's like, well, what do you expect me to tell you if you never right. Right. So able to really kind of tell like, okay, what are your deal breakers too? It's like, can you deal with somebody that's past progressive? Like that's how they express their emotions. I can preemptively tell you, these are the things. Is that something you can deal with? Like, are you able to handle it? Are you able to grow from it? So I think that's the element of the compatibility initially, if you're not, you know, already coupled with somebody. Very interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm actually, <clears throat> So, you know, I'm, I kind of dabble in, you know, I know I'm a Leo and, you know, some different things. And so, uh, you know, as I was starting to date and do some different things a while back, I, I popped in at some different things and I'm like, hmm, I like this person. Yet everything I'm reading says that because their sign is X, Y, Z, you know, we're not compatible. And yet, you know, it's, it's just funny, you know, because, you know, my thing ultimately is, yeah, you know, maybe not. But if, if all of those things are there, then you either work things out or you don't. Right. I mean, exactly. Um, especially, you know, as, as adults who are 40 plus, it's like, wait a minute, you, you know, you talk about, you talked a minute ago about, you know, the choices being smaller as a disabled person. I feel the same way as I've gotten older. I'm like, you know, wow. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't quite supposed to be here in my life, but it's all good. It's all good. So, and I would say, don't write. Uh, that's what you said. You're, which makes sense with the hair. You're definitely a Leo. You have a great personality. I like Leos. Most of my friends are Leos, but um, my hair tells you I'm a Leo. Yeah, because it's very like mane-like. It has that like, 
Leo's do always, there's always something with the hair. It's like either they're touching it a lot or they're like have the quite the hairdo and it has like that main like appearance. It's great head of hair. So I, you know, Leo rules like hair, which is interesting. Signs can rule body parts. But um, besides that point, I'd say never write somebody off uh, based on their sun sign because there's the whole rest of their chart. There's way more than that. It's like, I don't know, say, Gemini and Taurus don't go well together. Well, I'm going to marry a Taurus and I'm a Gemini, but it, that's just not true because there's other elements of our compatibility. Mm -hmm. So people looking at like Google, it's like, okay, well, I don't like Pisces. Like, no, you don't not like Pisces. Like also we, I want to say as far as inclusivity, every person's chart has every sign in it to varying degrees. Mm. So you are really everything. You're all interconnected to the universe, each other. Everybody has certain elements always like you have everything in you that's interesting and I, I never heard anybody i never heard anybody talk about it like that from that perspective so um that's interesting <clears throat> um good good so i mean let's, let's let's shift gears again tell me um tell me best business advice that either you've ever gotten or that you'd like for people to sort of or best advice you know sort of in general that you'd like to share today yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, honestly, I think the best business advice I've ever gotten was from a friend of mine. This, for some reason, it always sticks in my mind when I'm doing stuff. I'm like, there are other people doing similar stuff. I'm like, but, you know, what am I doing wrong? Or like getting in that negative self-talk. So what she said to me is that, you know what, you're your own island. If people like what they see on your island, they're going to swim over to your island and they're going to you know, occupy. So that goes for businesses service is that you, there could be a, it's like, there could be a million hairdressers. There could be a million tarot card readers, a million, you know, tax accountants, but it's like, what is it about you that you do that's so specific that people are drawn to you? There are always going to be people that are drawn to you. Just to have that confidence that you are unique in your own right. Yeah, you know, I love that because it's, you know, we spend, I think sometimes we spend too much time on what makes me different, what makes me unique, what makes me whatever, right? Because you can't help but be unique, right? Um, I often laugh with my clients. It's like, you know, I, I tell them point blank, look, I'm not, I'm not for everybody, right? If you don't like the direct kind of, not in your face, but the direct to the point, here's what you need, here's, you know, if you're not somebody who, who deals well with that, then I'm not your person. Um, and I'm okay with that, right? Because that's, that's, you know, I, I certainly have a soft side, I certainly can do the compassion and all of that. But from a business perspective, you know, I'm like, let's get this done. Let's move on. Let's, you know, let's, let's make this thing work. Um, and so it's interesting that you said that. And yet we all do have the ability to, you know, to be things on either side of, you know, where we are. It's, I, I look at it as it's a continuum, right? right. You probably spend the most of your time here, but you spend some time here and you spend some time here. And, you know, when you stretch, maybe you get all the way over here for, you know, an itty bitty little amount of time. And then you want to jump back to that middle point, but it's that piece of we're ever evolving, right. And we're ever right. growing and changing and, and, and being, and I think that's the thing, right. We're, we're so busy sometimes doing that we forget about the being part. No, that's, it's very true. And you know what, just, yeah, being ourselves and knowing that's enough, that people are going to resonate with us, that people are going to, you know, find something about us or they're not going to like, but that's the thing. It's like, we can't control other people as much as we want to. We try to control the world as humans, like our own little universe. You can't control how other people are going to react to you, but you can control how you react you know, and being on that continuum and sort of tapping into certain aspects of yourself and realizing what you need to work on is, you know, I think that's a major point of growth. And I think, you know, as you said, sometimes you're stretching, sometimes you're not, you know, sometimes it's a push. It's like, and I always kind of say too, it's like, if something feels uncomfortable and you're probably like, as far as business and you're probably going in the right direction, if people are kind of like telling you no, then honestly, I'd say kind of keep going with it. Yeah, the worst, I think the worst thing is to, to be in the group and, and moving in the direction of everyone else. I often say people, if, if you look around and you find yourself in a, in a crowd and, and you, everyone has a white shirt on and you have a white shirt on, you should go change to red. Um, right, because, right. you, you yeah. know, are you a leader or are you a follower? You're right. If you have the white shirt on like everyone else, no one notices you. But if you have a red shirt on, everybody's going to notice you. Um, you know, it's the same thing if everybody's walking east turn around and walk west. 
Exactly. Exactly. Right. Yes. You're going to irritate some people because you're in the way and you're going the wrong, the quote wrong way, but you're also going to get noticed um, because you're doing something different. Right. And I, and I think it's that piece of, um, and I think especially in the queer community, we have a tendency sometimes, I think we go against the grain so much that sometimes it's like, I just want to blend in. I just want to, you know, I just want to be one of the many instead of, you know, instead of that, that person that is standing out. So um, what do you think? So we talked briefly a little bit ago about the whole, you know, one of the issues that you see needing more attention in the community is the whole, you know, issue of being more open to the, the disability and, and aware of that at our events. Is there anything else that, that sort of sticks out that you think is an issue or something that is a challenge in our community that that's, that's coming up that, maybe we either aren't aware of or that we need to, you know, spend more time dealing with? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Well, I think, hope, I won't get into politics, but hopefully things, wherever you stand, I'm going to say, I think energetically, even in astrology, things are moving in a more, you know, accepting route, you know, regardless around the world. Um, actually, that's sort of what I wanted to mention is around the world is that there are still many and you know we can't change other countries policies but i just want to shed light that there are because i specifically have clients that live in singapore and you know they're hiding their relationship they you know they're two women living together they have you know jobs and medical facilities and you know it's not legal i think as far as i know to get married there but it's also kind of hidden that they can still lose their job for coming out. So they live in fear. And I spent the whole session with this woman asking me about her husband. And at the end, she's like, I have to tell you something I'm like what she's like, I, it's my wife. I'm like, Oh, well, good. I'm glad you told me that because I'm a lesbian too. Like and I'm getting married soon. And she's like, Oh, thank God. But you know, we don't think about that. We're very lucky here in the U S to have at least, you know, depending where we live that visibility but it's it's an issue around the world there's a lot of violence i think still towards you know the lgbtq plus community and maybe sometimes we're a little hyper focused on our own little bubble it's like we're accepted and we're okay for the most part but maybe we need to start thinking about how can we you know even offer even if it's a virtual community or support groups or something for people in other countries if they're able to to have that sense of community that's sort of something that it's been sticking in my mind ever since I had that really that conversation with her is how lucky we are, but versus where's the support for those people in other countries that have no access to a community. Yeah, and you know, not to play devil's advocate, but it, what's interesting too, I think is, and I've thought about this a lot, it, you know, we, if we live in cities, right? I live in Atlanta and here, I don't think much about it, right? Because we have a, a pretty large queer community. We've got out Georgia, which used to be the Atlanta Gay and Lesbian Chamber. Um, you know, we've got all these things. We look at major cities, right, which is where we think of, you know, queer people kind of being. Um, but then I grew up, you know, in rural Ohio on a 75 acre farm. And I think about, you know, what do kids do that are in those environments in rural parts of the country and parts of the country where they don't have a lot of role models or there's not a community center, or, you know, where do they go for support? And certainly, you know, I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing the fact that in other countries, they, they they certainly have challenges because, you know, we've got, you can turn on the TV now. And like when I was a kid and see gay people, right. Um, which was like, you know, I mean, I remember when Ellen came out, it was the big major controversy, right? And she lost the show and all of those things. Now it's, it's sort of more like, yeah, whatever. Why are you telling me this? You know, people are like, you know, it is what it is. But, but I think, I think you're right. I think certainly other countries as well as just don't want to lose fact that, uh, lose sight of the fact that there are still plenty of, of places here where people are still struggling with that very thing. And, you know, you can change laws all you want. But when you can't change what's in people's hearts. No, it's true. I'm, I'm you know, glad you brought that up as well, because that's something, you know, I over I didn't quite overlook it. I think when I said it, I overlooked it. But, um, you know, somebody too, I'll throw myself out here is that, you know, I grew up in a very religious family, almost cult like, to be honest. Um, I wasn't really allowed to interact with even other people. So, mm -hmm. you know, and gayness was or queerness in general was like, I will kill you if you ever are, you know, the level of like, 
you know, honestly, abuse and violence that I experienced in part relating to that, you know, put a lot of fear into me. And I know that I'm not the only person that has that experience or had that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm sure it, it kind of continues because we can, yeah, as you said, say anything we want to on TV and make it look like one big happy, like, woohoo, like everything is fine and everyone's equal. Well, no, it's not. And it does depend upon your environment, like your family's culture, like your town's culture. It's like, how do they view you? You know, how isolated are you? You know, thank God for the internet now for a lot of people they are able to see that there's maybe light at the other end of the tunnel or talk to people, yeah. you know, in those communities. But it, I, I can understand and empathize that, yeah, no, we, we have a lot of work to do as far as that, you know, support. And, you know, it's interesting. I just read an article this morning um, on Facebook of a girl who on a school bus, I can't remember now what state it was in, on a school bus said to another kid that she was a lesbian and she's now off the bus. She was written up and is now off the bus and the school is potentially going to expel her because you said I'm a lesbian. It's like, would you, have, if she had said, I, I like that little boy, no one would have thought anything, you know, here we are. I mean, it's 2021 right. and those things are still happening. So um, it's, it's kind of amazing when you think about, you know, how far we've come and yet how far we still have to go so right no it's it's, it's a sobering it's a sobering thought and you know yeah. kind of because we're both really in more except but it's at the same time i mean in reality i live in a very safe area i have access to you know i have a community that you know queer folks and etc and so on you know disabled people as well but I don't necessarily always feel comfortable even wanting to touch my partner on the shoulder or get too close to her in a grocery store or depending what, you know, I'm trying to always assess the situation. There's always, I think, that underlying fear sure. that we carry. So it's always there. It's that, you know, well, I feel safe, but what, you know, even the looks like those hurt, you know, those hurt, they can't, they won't kill us. They're just like saying things behind our back, but that can always escalate. It depends on where you are to violence. So it's, but there is that always that underlying, like what if something yeah. happens because yeah, you definitely I, have to be, yeah. definitely have to be on, uh, on alert. That's for sure. Yeah. So Amanda, tell everybody um, how they can get in touch with you, where they can find you if they're interested in the, either having a reading or just finding out more information about you. Yeah. Cause I do a lot of video. They can watch free videos. I do a lot of stuff like that. I do workshops actually one I'm going to do that might be of interest to um, your community here is that I'm doing money manifesting and the mid heaven. So talking about your career and astrology and how you can get the best out of it and you know, what's affecting that, how, what's blocking you, what's you know holding you back. How can we move forward? Um, if people want to check me out or, you know, watch videos, uh, even get in contact with me, feel free to ask questions in general to learn more about astrology. I am astrology by Amanda on Facebook. That's my main, where I mainly operate my business, or if they want to also reach out to me. I am a the in-house astrologer for quantumshift.us. So that is a spiritual community that incorporates holistic practitioners, um, astrologers as well, readers, um, people that are very health-based and focused, also business-based and manifesting what you want as far as business. So I recommend that platform as well. They can reach out to me there too. Perfect. Very good. Very good. Well, this has been, um, this has just been, I, I love that we talked about so many different things and related to and, and somehow managed to always to, to, to bring those things back into what you do. So I love that. So thank you very much for, for sharing and for your time. Um, just as a reminder, again, uh, go check Amanda out. If you have an interest in the, in the, in, in seeing more about what she does and maybe having a reading, definitely get in touch. Um, just as a reminder, I'm Diane Conklin, and you have been listening to the Queer Prophets podcast. If you are interested in checking out the uh, free report that I have for you, which is always available to you on Queer Prophets, three ways to grow your business fast and get more clients and make more money, just go to queerprofits.com. And um, I'm excited to see you the next time on the Queer Prophets podcast, where again, we stand for our three pillars, inclusion, community, and growth. Until next time, make it a great day.